Uh, hello everyone. So this will be the final installment, kind of a wrap up of the causes of disease and I will wrap up with a, a prevention and kind of a little bit of a treatment for the causes of disease. So how to prevent it, how to keep your body healthy, how to have a balance and how to have moderation. So I'm going to talk about a few things just very quickly and in general. In other videos, I might go into more detail, but this one will just be a general outline of how to live a healthy life. So we all know that we need protein, we need carbohydrates, we need fats, we need minerals, we need vitamins, but where do we get these? So <laughs> there's a lot of information around, there's lots of people doing different things, but if you look at the, the science and the research and the books, they all go in a similar way. They don't talk negatively about vegetables, they don't talk negatively about fruit, and generally they don't have negative things about seeds and nuts. So those are what would form the basis of your healthy lifestyle and your preventative lifestyle, because it all starts with what we put in. If what we put in is good, then our body can balance out the rest and it can eliminate the rest. If our the food is, is good that we're putting in, we're having enough minerals and vitamins, then our immune system and our body can function in such a way that it can eliminate the toxins that we cannot control. So then everything functions together. It's like uh, I talked about in the previous parts where if the soil is healthy, your plant will be healthy and it won't be attacked by any insects or bugs. So you can also watch Dr. Elaine Ingham's series. There's a series of hers on YouTube where she talks about soil health <clears throat> and that if your soil is healthy and it contains everything it needs, the plant will be healthy and it will contain all the minerals it needs and it will not be attacked by any bugs or insects. So the same with our bodies. If our bodies are healthy and imbalanced and we are putting in the right things, and we are eliminating the environmental toxins that are coming in, then we are able to have a more balanced and a more healthy life where we won't be attacked by so many pathogens. <clears throat> so the first one I want to talk about is water. So water is extremely important because most of our bodies are water. Some of the different parts have more water than others. For example, your eyes have more than 90% water whereas um, some of the other organs don't have as much, but we are more than 60% water. So you need lots of water. If you have a headache, it can be the first sign that you are dehydrated. You can also look at how quickly your skin rebounds, how quickly your capillaries refold. If you press on your nail, it goes white, how quickly it comes back as red. You can look if you if you lift up your skin and it returns quickly, then you are fine. If it takes a long time to go back, then you are dehydrated. So always have something to drink. I have my bottle of water here permanently and I always drink. If you have a headache, try drink water, like half a cup to a cup of water every 10 minutes for 90 minutes and see if that will take away your headache. Usually that would work. So water is important, then sunlight. We need at least 30 minutes of direct sunlight exposure <clears throat> per day to keep your bones healthy, to uh, absorb your calcium, to make serotonin and melatonin, to balance your circadian rhythm, to help your sleep, to help your happiness. All of these things are affected by vitamin D and the best sources from the sun. So you can get uh, the exposure anywhere on your body but it's best to get it two hours after you've had a shower and washed where your, your skin oils are back so that you can <clears throat> actually absorb that oil because any washing, any scrubbing removes the oils from your, your skin and it takes about one to two hours for it to come back so that you can absorb the sunlight again. And if you are following a plant-based lifestyle with a lot of raw fruit and vegetables, that will build up your skin. So your skin will be healthier and stronger and it won't get so much damage. And darker skinned people can have longer sun exposure without experiencing the, the sun damage. Uh, I personally, I, I have very sensitive skin. It's become less sensitive since I've gone completely plant-based and 
implemented the things that I'm talking to you about. I can be in the sun longer and I go browner instead of red and my skin is healthier than it used to be. Then you also need fresh air. So get into the fresh air, get into places where there's a lot of plants, a lot of trees, especially trees are beneficial to give you fresh air. In your house, open the windows, get airflow, get yourself some plants in the house. If you go and Google indoor plants, you'll get loads of them. If you uh, put in as well oxygen producing plants, you'll see that there are a few plants that produce oxygen 24 seven. These are wonderful to have in your house. I think one of them is called uh, old lady's tongue like a, or snake plant, these long straight leaves. Also, I think it's a rubber tree that also produces all the time. Then also herbs are good to have in your, in your house because they also keep insects and mosquitoes at bay. And they are then easily available for you to make teas from as well. <clears throat> so fresh air is also really important because a lot of the diseases around today is as a result of air pollution. Then or organic fresh produce is another very important one. You want to try and get crops that don't come from monocultures because monocultures are heavily sprayed. They are not always properly fertilized. And they don't have the nutrients that they need. Uh, it could be better to get things from your own garden or from people that you know, or from uh, permaculture or agroforestry or integrated crop producing farms or areas. If you cannot, then do the best you can wash your produce with baking soda and vinegar to remove those chemicals, get it off them, and then you can consume as fresh and as much fresh things as you can. Then eat nutrient-rich foods. So nutrient-rich foods are the plants and the seeds and the nuts and the grains, the legumes, the fruits, vegetables. Those are the nutrient dense foods. Animal products are not nutrient dense. They do not contain all the nutrients that you need. They are deficient in many minerals, many vitamins that are essential for your health. One being, for example, silica. Silica is in the plant's structure to make it help be strong. <clears throat> we need silica in our bones for our bones to be strong. So if you look at the data, the countries with the highest milk intake the highest meat intake also have the highest osteoporosis and bone disease why because they are leaching out the calcium through this very high acidic diet and they are also not having the trace minerals that come from the plants if you look at the animals that are the strongest and have the strongest bones they are herbivores they are plant eaters so we don't have to go and eat grass like a cow but alfalfa Greens uh, will be beneficial for your bones. Alfalfa, um, broccoli, lettuce, kale, celery is another wonderful one. So all of these beet greens, all of them are very good and contain all the micronutrients that the trace elements that will be beneficial to all the different parts in your body. Then religion and trust and faith in God is also really important because it gives you a hope and uh, a trust and it gives you health from inside. If you look at the Bible, many proverbs, they'll, they'll tell you that a happy heart brings about a cheerful spirit. Um, pleasant words are like a honeycomb. So meaning you need happiness, you need good thoughts, happy thoughts, positivity. And this comes from trusting and having faith in God. <clears throat> Other religions have a lot of fear-based ideas and a lot of everything relies on yourself and that brings in lots of negative thoughts. But if you believe in God, God is love and that everything flows from this loving creator, then your life will be filled with love and be filled with trust and faith and all of these good things so that that will promote health. And if you look at the research as well, uh, it shows that people living in the blue zones with that live a longer life have a belief in God and a trust in God. Then you also need sleep. So sleep you need every single day. You follow your circadian rhythm. We've also had the seasons and the sun to guide us when you should sleep and when you should be awake. 
So if we look at that, we should go to sleep early and wake up early, early to rise, early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise, I think the proverb goes. So <clears throat> hours before 12 are doubled, as the research says, and you then can wake up early when the sun rises. That gives you more hours in the day. It gives you time to exercise in the morning. It gives you time to read your Bible, meditate. So that sets you up for a wonderful day ahead. I found if I exercise and I read my Bible in the morning, I have a much better day ahead of me. I'm filled with, with positivity and energy for the day ahead. So good rule of thumb, get to bed by nine, then you're asleep by 10 then you should be awake between six and seven in the morning. I try to be asleep around nine, nine thirty, so that I can be awake between five and six in the morning. So that is how I usually try to have my routine. Sleep is especially important. Your REM sleep helps with your cognitive function and your broad memory uh, banking or saving. Your deep sleep helps your detailed memories be put in. So you need both REM sleep, light sleep and deep sleep to put into your memory everything that you have learned and keep yourself healthy. The natural products are important. Try to reduce the chemicals. The less ingredients in things, the better. Learn as much as you can as well. Read, read widely, read a lot. And then remember moderation in all things. Even the good things, there is also some moderation needed. So not too much, not too little, moderation, a balance. A balance in all things is important. So that is what I can give you. Eat a variety of foods, eat different colors, different tastes, different things. Try to get them locally, try to get them fresh, try to get them from places that you know what they put on them or if you can grow them yourself, so much the better. But as always, do the best you can. Okay, don't worry, don't stress too much. If you can't be perfect, do the best you can. And that will help you to also feel empowered and positive and good. And that will also promote health. So I hope this has been beneficial to you. If it has, please share it around. Like, subscribe. It helps the algorithm, helps the videos reach more people. And as always, to God be the glory and Stay healthy.